Look, y'all. Excuse my raspy voice, but um, I was watching this news clip, and I'm just seeing a trend. I'm from Chicago, so this crime is going on. You know, I see even even there escalated crimes with all these carjackers. You know, carjackers was really only something you heard that they was doing in Cali. You know, a couple years back, like, I mean, I, you know, back in 05, when you heard that, when that first came out, that was them. You know, their gangs was real bad. But now Chicago, the whole drill culture. And then on top of that, when you look at it from a, a gang, uh, like, a, um, a, um, you know, just a targeted person or just someone who has been right, wrongfully accused of, you know, us being a target. You see what don't nobody else see. You can see the trend. Because it's like, okay, if 95% of the people are in on it, then they could be they could be persuaded to target somebody like an innocent person they don't even know, right? So that they could live better, right? So it's nothing to increase crime. They'll do anything they tell them to do, so... One day, I was in Harold's Chicken. I think I was in like Hyde Park. Yeah, I was leaving a friend house. We had a couple drinks. This was a couple years ago, maybe about two or three. Um, and they seemed to target me with a lot of gays. It was this big dude. You know, he came in there. He was kind of, you know, he was feminine, and he was like, he came in there with a bunch of people, you know, it was, I don't want to say a bunch, maybe like four, it was a group of them, but I was by myself, and it was me and this older dude in there, and then there was an Uber guy that had walked in, you know, to get an order, but they walked in, of course, they always followed the crowd, because when I walked in, there really wasn't nobody in there, and people was like getting their food, leaving out, it was me and this dude that had ordered, we were sitting on the bench, and then here come the crowd, they walked in, they was all route, loud and rowdy, and like he was looking at me, it's just you can you get an uncomfortable feeling, and it's kind of like okay, you a male, I'm a female. What you sizing me up for? Like you want to fight me? Like you know, just that type of energy, you know. And then he was like, mm, "It's the purge out here tonight." Oh, that's right. It was like I think it was Halloween that day, or like pre-Halloween, and they was going around tearing up people' cars. You know, a lot of teenagers. You know they get that gang stalking app. They have these things called pop-up parties where it's just like I'm assuming because they're the only ones that can communicate in mass communication like that and be on point. You tell these motherfuckers to all arrive in one spot. They all going to arrive in one spot. They did that. I forgot where it was. They did it in Chicago. They popped up. It was on the news. They popped up at one spot. A whole bunch of them. They flooded the street. Police was out there. They couldn't do nothing with them. They was all on top of the car twerking. You can look it up. Pop-up parties in Chicago. Twerking. They had liquor in their cups. I'm like, and the police put the window, riding with the window down, smiling. You know, all this on cam. I'm like, what the fuck? This world has went bananas. And they, and they were saying it was trash, litter everywhere. And then all of a sudden, motherfuckers get a text to leave. And then they all leave on cue. And, and, and lead it and lead the area flooded with trash i'm like wow if we had that much unity you know what i'm saying who has control over these young people like that these are all gang stalkers they all got different assignments <laughs> so basically they've been told to turn up you can see it's crime increasing everywhere they've been or the the the, the demon in them done turned up something that made these motherfuckers go to another level. Look, the same thing that I'm seeing, you know, all over Chicago, you know, I'm hearing this a lot of drill in the East Coast now, New York and stuff, you know. <sighs> same thing over here. Where is they at on here? They in Los Angeles. Well, we know about Los Angeles. But for them to say, LA PD to say, it's a crime surge crisis? They saying this is coming up because what does it say? How much did they cut from the budget? 
that whole defund the police situation was just, that was a trick. That was the gang stalkers out there chanting defund the police as if that was what the public wanted. We don't want that because if they defund the police, then it's really going to be the purge. And all crimes going to be legal. Huh. I don't know. I got to go get me a gun because I'm praying. I'm going to pray hard. I'm going to fast and repent for cigarettes and all the other stuff. And say repent daily because every day we, we do something but it's like <sighs> okay I'm gonna play this uh, it's an increase in shootings and homicides robberies carjackings we are facing some serious challenges in Oakland that we need the resources to be able to address it and having less resources is not going to help us manage this problem Open stop cop blasting city council's decision to cut more than $18 million from his department's budget. And the move comes as violent crime skyrockets across the Bay Area. Homicides alone are up over 90% from the same time last year. 90%? Two members of law enforcement. Cosmo Lubrano, he's a former member of the NYPD, and Dion Joseph of the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, Dion, I want to ask you about what's happening up there in Oakland. You know that state well. I don't know how you how much you know about that area, but the fact that this officer, you know, he's practically begging, though he's doing it in a very calm and measured way, to get people to open their eyes to what could happen there. Get your thoughts on that. Well, everywhere this defund movement is uh, uh, sprouting up, crime is increasing. And I cannot believe that our politicians are stepping back and saying, hey, this is not working. Because what we have now, we don't have civic leaders anymore in some places. We have followers in leadership positions who put their finger in the air to see which way the wind is blowing and they go with the wind. And they capitulate to uh, social justice types. And it's almost as if they don't care about What's really happening and a half on the street level, bodies dropping, what? the children getting shot, just going to McDonald's, the fathers walking down the street holding their child's hand and getting shot. They don't even care about that. You won't even find this stuff on their social media page. So uh, it, it's so unfortunate, and I, I feel every word of that police chief's uh, statements, it's heartbreaking to hear. Cosmo, you know, if you cut money from a police department, you know, there are practical effects, and you can see them all across the country. Uh, you saw it yourself. Um, what kind of what does this do to actual practical applications to be able to get police out in order to uh, you know patrol the streets and prevent crime you know as much as i appreciate being here my, my seven-year-old son can answer this question i mean if you're going to cut funds from police departments <laughs> and crime is going to rise and how do you get it back down without putting funds back into those police departments and and giving them the resources and the backing that they need to go out there and and, and fight crime these politicians should, should go out there and talk to these communities that are most affected by this. I mean, it's, it's obvious that the neighborhoods and the communities that it affects. And without giving the police the opportunity to do their job, when I was an officer and crime spiked in areas, we flooded those areas with police. Even if just for an omnipresence. I mean, if there's police standing in areas where crime is surging, it's a deterrence for the most part. It should be a deterrence for people to not commit crimes. But you also need to allow the police to do their job because it's becoming a situation where bail reform, defund the police. Okay, so basically, if they want to, they run in this whole thing about defund the police across the United States, defund the police and its problems. Not only have the gang stalkers turned up, but the police done turned up. It's like the police demons done turned up. They're more violent. They're killing. I mean, they always been like that, but it's like on another level. Now, they ain't just beating up niggas. They murdering niggas. You know, like in cold blood and don't care who see. And, and, you know, and dare you. Try me. Sue me. You know? So, it's like all the police officers in every city done went rogue. And the good ones that don't want to get involved with that shit because it's a cold blue. I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a cold blue. You know what I'm saying? Like they supposed to stick together like brothers. But the good ones, like you know, they say even if you ain't with it, you you better not say nothing. They don't want to be a part of that. So 
the good ones are like, you know, they shutting them out anyway. They isolating them like they isolate us. You've heard of police officers on here who, who have talked about being targeted. You know, no longer working for the police force, letting us know the ins and outs of what be going on. Like, uh, every day, it's another piece of the puzzle connect. You know, this defund the police was, we knew it was an agenda, but every day, you see why. You starting to see it's all becoming clear. And you know when the picture starts becoming clear, you know how when you got some a word that's scrabbled and then you start to figure out the word, the first letter, second letter, the back of the two letters. And once you start to know what the word is, it's kind of like, okay, now you see me. Now what's up? You know, like that's how they're going to be like, okay, you figured it out. That's when they're going to really go rogue. So this is a new gear we in. You know, it's the middle of the, it's the first of the month. The middle of the year. Like technically, June the thirtieth was was the last day of the of the first half of the year. Now we're working on the second half of the year. Six months in, six months beginning, six months towards the end. We are already halfway in it, so June first, it's turn up time. My landlord couldn't wait till my fucking first came. He came and put a, a, a letter in the mailbox time and he want to go up on a rent $150. Like, I felt, I felt an energy shift. I felt, I, I felt a notch up, a level up. Who, oh, they ain't the only ones leveling up, you know? Only reason why I guess I don't feel, you know what? God is so merciful because even though I have not been doing all what I need to do, he still be talking to me. He still be warning me. He still be showing me stuff. And I don't have visions like dreams, like people, you know, we all got different gifts, but I have, you know, maybe a lot of us do got deep empathy and deep discernment. All it take, all it takes is a little a little bit of meditation or something. Think about it. Think about anything. And it seemed like when you start to think about stuff, he be uncracking them puzzles, like showing you stuff. And you be like, oh my goodness. I give all the credit to him. Because that's him shining a light for me. Making a, you know, when you lost and can't see, he show you, you know. He just make it, he make it all make sense when it just didn't make no sense. But you know, it's always an agenda and it's always a motive behind what they do. But they want it to be by the time you figure it out, it's too late. They already got bills signed and laws changed and, you know, they be sneaking it in and <clears throat> writing executive orders in the middle of the night while you sleep. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. But, um... Yeah.